This is iOS 17, and I've been using it for about a month. It brought us a whole bunch of cool new features like name drop, standby mode, interactive widgets, and a whole bunch of other stuff. A lot of these new features are somewhat hidden, like Apple hasn't mentioned them on their website or their live event or anything like that. So without further ado, let's get into the video. First off, I want to talk about contact posters. Essentially what a contact poster is, is whenever someone calls you, it'll show a custom picture and their name and a custom font behind them. Generally, I think it's kind of pointless because even before I was 17, when someone called you, it would already show their contact picture and their name. The thing with contact posters is, someone can set their own contact poster that will show up on other people's phones when they call someone. So someone could put some like nasty, disgusting pictures their contact poster and everyone else has to see it when they call them. But if you don't like the contact poster that someone else made, you can also just create your own contact poster for them. From all the advertising and the phrasing in the event, you can tell that Apple really wants this feature to catch on. But honestly, I think mostly just like the hyper customization people that switched over from Android are going to use this feature. The second feature, which I think is really cool, is called standby mode. You plug in your phone and place it on its side and voila, a nightstand. In standby mode, there are three different screens you can flip through. On the first screen, it shows two selected widgets. On the second screen, it can flip through a photo album. And the third screen just shows the time where there's a lot of different cool clocks and designs that you can flip through. It almost reminds me of an Apple Watch. There are some instances where this could actually be really useful, like if you want to keep your eye on some important information without picking up your phone and falling into some Instagram rabbit hole. It can also display the live activities that were added in iOS 16. So in standby mode, you can see the scores from like a football game or a soccer game or something. Well, sometimes it's a hassle to get your phone into standby mode though, unless you have Apple's $100 wireless charger. If you don't have Apple's $100 wireless charger, you have to try to prop your phone on its side somehow by pulling up the book next to it or something which is just a really big pain most of the time. Personally, I don't think it's very practical, and the only time I ever used this feature was when I was testing it out for this video. The third actually useful feature I want to talk about is interactive widgets. So basically, when they introduced widgets with iOS 14, widgets were only able to display information from apps, but you couldn't really control the apps. Now with interactive widgets in iOS 17, you can control the apps. For example, you can use an interactive widget to pause or play music from your home screen. Right now, mostly just Apple Music lets you do this because Spotify hasn't updated their widgets yet, but I'm really excited to see what a lot of third-party developers do with interactive widgets in the future. You can also check off to-dos or reminders straight from your home screen, or even call or FaceTime someone straight from the widget. It's really nice because there's so much stuff you can do without actually going onto an app and getting trapped in an algorithm or something. The next feature I want to talk about is the new updates to FaceTime. They added 3D reaction detection so if I give a thumbs up on camera during the FaceTime call, it'll show a little thumbs up emoji. I think that's pretty useless though, but the useful thing they added is video voicemails. Basically, if I FaceTime someone and they don't pick up, then I can record a little video of myself that they can watch when they see the missed call. I think Apple really wants FaceTime to become the way that people call each other, a sneaky little tactic to make Android people feel left out. The fifth feature is the new text generation. Now it's a super accurate algorithm that adds all the punctuation. Sometimes there's still a few little problems but I think it's almost perfect. It's also useful with Siri and voice messages. I think my favorite part of iOS 17 is what they've done with messages. Instead of having all the iMessage apps in this little stoop above the keyboard, we have the plus button instead. It shows all the default Apple stuff first and then the third party stuff. If you share your location with someone, it can show your live location in the message conversation. There's a new messaging feature called check-in where when you send it to someone, it'll send their phone a notification when you arrive at home. For example, if I'm driving home from practice and I send a check-in to my mom. It'll send her a notification when I get home. And you know how speech detection just got better? Well now when you send a voice note to someone, it transcribes the audio into text that they can read so they don't have to listen to the audio recording. There's also a couple other little things like swipe to reply and search filters. The seventh feature I wanted to talk about is the new stickers. Remember when I was 16 when they made it so that you could pull an object out of an image? Well now you can use those as stickers and put them over text bubbles. I think this is one of the coolest parts of iOS 17. It just makes texting people so much more fun. Fun. The eighth big feature I want to talk about is name drop. Basically what it is is you hold two iPhones together near their tops and then it sends the two iPhones to each other's contacts. People can use it to share contact posters, airdrop files, and even start share play sessions. It sounds pretty cool at first but I've noticed over the past month that not very many people use it and any time I've got someone's phone number we just did it the old fashioned way. So it's starting to get into that spooky time of year right now. You're starting to see Halloween decorations in people's yards, Halloween decorations in stores, basically Halloween everything everywhere. And it's time for you to get into the Halloween spirit too. 
Part of the spooky spirit means getting your phone into the spooky spirit with the James Adams Halloween wallpaper pack. It comes with 10 high quality Halloween wallpapers, all for just $2 regularly. But right now for October, I'm doing a special 50% off sale where you can get the entire pack for just $1. The sale ends on October 30th, so you better go pick it up today and then come back and watch the rest of the video. Go to the link in the description right now. Back to the video. The next feature most probably won't care about it, but it's useful for some people still. That is the ability to download offline maps. If you ever want to go on a hike in like a national park or something and you forgot to pick up one of those paper maps, you can download an offline map that you can use on the trail. You just select this little box where you want to download and you're good to go. The last feature is visual lookup where you can select an image from a photo and look it up online. If you see a cool flower or bird or plant or something like that, you can take a photo. So that's the 10 main features, but there's a whole bunch of other little things that you can learn about on Apple's website. I'll leave a link in the description. That's all I've got for you today. Make sure to like and subscribe, do the YouTube stuff, and as always, see you in the next one. Peace.